Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the Dynamic Data and Capabilities Working Group uh, meeting. Um, thank you for joining. I'm going to be sharing my screen with, with today's notes. Cool. Um, started recording. Uh, so can everyone put their name at, in the list of attendees, please? I'm going to do that myself. Uh, I'm going to paste the CryptPad URL here. There is chat. It's so weird. Okay. <laughs> I hit I hit some sorry. Um uh, yeah, I'm going to cool. Um uh, what's all can you add yourself please? Sorry? Uh, can you add yourself to the list of attendees? Yes, yes, give me one second. All right. Um there's a few of us. I, I don't think anyone you need to um have anyone taking notes? I can do that myself. Um, all right, so I was putting myself before Machi, but Machi put himself first. Machi, do you want to go ahead and give your week, uh, bi weekly update? Uh, yes, uh, I didn't uh, get anything done that week. Um, I'm still working on load testing for PeerPad and the rendezvous integration, but I'm mainly blocked uh, by some bugs uh, in the load testing branch after rebasing and also the LPDP chicken and egg problems, which involve the fact that rendezvous depends on uh, the LPDP swarm, but uh, rendezvous is going to be a, a discovery module, so it uh, should not depend on the swarm being created and that's uh, currently still unresolved and I don't know what to do about that. Okay, um, we should, uh, it's been hanging around for a few weeks that problem. We probably should um, um, drop in in the next uh, JSIPFS meeting and and just just say that we're blocked on, on that. And also ping ping that issue. I'm, uh, I can I can do that. Ping that issue. Um, uh, if, can you pass that that issue here so that I know exactly which one it, it is? Uh, Machi in the in the CryptPad notes. Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, any more updates, Machi? No, not really. Okay, but thank about you. The, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, about the uh, chicken and egg problems that is also affecting lots of my other modules because uh, everything that's a bit more advanced than what the current interfaces offer require direct access to the swarm. So there should be a way to access the swarm directly while things are being created. Okay, so this it's, it's bigger than just rendezvous. Um, okay. Um, yeah, we'll we'll I'll I'll do my bit to press JSIPFS uh, on to try on to coming up with a solution for well P two P coming up with a solution for this. About uh, the issue, I don't think there is a proper issue. Only that one PR that adds rendezvous to JSIPFS. Maybe one should be created instead. Yeah, I I think we we should. That's currently like like there's an issue with all these these modules. It's currently blocking. Um, progress on here, here, and here. Um, chicken and egg, uh, what's the solution? And then, then, then people will want to discuss the, the solution, I guess, on, on that issue. And then, and then track, track this, the resolving of that on that issue. I think, yeah, there should be an issue. Um, so part of it is actually, I think part of it is, uh, in the LPDP next refactor, so I don't know if that's maybe. Um, yeah, we we want to make sure it's included. So this is the link to the uh, LPDP next issue, and 
I think it's part of that, uh, that these problems get solved, but I'm not really sure. I can also add the link to the PR. Okay, I will share the screen so everyone sees what I'm doing. Oh, so stop. Yep. Okay. I'll try, I'll track this one. Make sure that, that it's, this is included here. Well, make sure no, uh, ask the vids or whoever is maintaining the P2P nowadays. Um, uh, I also now added the link uh, to the PR that adds rendezvous to JS IPFS, but I think adding it there isn't the right place. Instead, it should be part of the P2P. Yeah, agree. Okay. Okay, thank you, Machi. All right. So, Gonzalo, can you go next? Sure. So, as I wrote in the notes, I don't have that much uh, to, to talk about this couple of weeks. So, being at the, a couple of weeks ago was at um, IPFS that day. We did discuss some stuff about the RDTs, and there was quite quite cool posters, sessions, and also deep dive sessions on that. Tatazor did a really good job on on kind of spreading spreading the, the message and whatever, and what's been done and what are the open issues and whatnot. So that was super interesting as well, but um, haven't had much time to work on anything else. So that's nice. Yeah, I'm super bummed that I had to miss that. Uh, so I, I kind of gave a, 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 bit, a bit here and there to, to Andre to, to show, but I, I heard he did a great job um, uh, presenting that, your star. Stuff I'm going to be talk. I, I I'm going to demo here later a bit more about Pure Star, but Pure Star integration on PurePad that I'm working on um, should be deploying that tomorrow. Um, but yeah, uh, it's a lot a lot of recent work. Thank you for for your update, uh, Gonzalo. Uh, so I'm I'm next. So let's see. Let's. Let me share my screen again. All right. Cool. Uh, so where was I? Here. Okay. So we. Good news. We should be using PeerPads officially on the, the next meetings uh, and the script path. If it's all working, I mean, if it's not working, uh, we shouldn't have a meeting at all. <laughs> So uh, that's the official stance on using PeerPad on, on, on the meetings, do, doing a bit of dog footing on that. Um, so this past two weeks, uh, so it was me coming from, from a short vacation and I've been working on leftovers of Peer Startup to making it ready uh, to be able to power two, three, uh, decentralized apps, so PeerPad, uh, Discussify, which is something that Andrea, he couldn't be here today uh, with personal uh, things, uh, busy with personal things. Uh, with uh, Andrea is going to, to be showing on next week on the Centralized Web Summit. Uh, we're also going to be demoing uh, PeerPad using PeerStar, and we're also going to be uh, conducting a workshop on showing people how to create centralized apps without uh, a blockchain. And namely, we're going to to do a to do to do app example app, which were were I, mean, I think it's all done. That that we were like a to do MVC app uh, that we are going to sprinkle uh, some peer star and some IPFS on top, and it it will it will all work uh, magically using peer star. Um, stuff underneath and and yeah, preparing for that for the last two weeks. So more con con concretely, Peer Star app um, included encryption and transmission and at rest. So uh, basic stuff like we have a, a keys, read and write keys. Uh, we can uh, use the read key uh, to encrypt and verify the, the signature from the write key on all the, the diff, the deltas that are on the network. And so the delta is never uh, is always uh, stored, encrypted, and signed. Uh, so we have at the same time encryption at rest 
why we have encryption net transmission. So this is this is uh, as a, this is part of the protocol. Now we also support unencrypted uh, pads for public public for pads no unencrypted collaborations or public collaborations. So no keys here. Uh, here there is no encryption at uh, at rest by default. If you want to, you can uh, pass in a, a function that will encrypt the the, the data. And this is all pure star app. Uh, functionality. Uh, so in progress, I've been doing some performance tests and some related performance improvements. Uh, not only performance, but uh, actually um, some uh, actual verifiable behavior uh, when the swarms are very big. And so I, there's, it's been very helpful to, to, to do that. I think it's more or less parallel to what Machi has been doing for peer pads um load tests uh but it's very specific to the peer star app and once and peer pad also i think needs uh, load tests uh, because it has it's a particular app that has particular use of the network uh, but I'm, I'm going i'm doing like a very generic use case for peer star app and doing some basic uh benchmarks on on how it scales when when switch forms um uh, right now i'm hitting a cpu limit but on the client side right now uh so uh, good news we're not the bottom like is my my computer uh, and it's not it's not the it's not the, the websocket star server with it, which i was afraid it would be so good news there um still some stuff to do there um also support and general improvements on pure star app um, on PeerPad, i'm integrating pure star app in it as i said and i'm doing some basic stuff that, that just to exercise some parts of pure star app like uh, showing remote cursors of each user which are not part of the crdt it's just part of the gossip um, so i'm shoving the cursors and markers on on the gossip protocol on pure star app and i have a working demo which i can bring up later if or i can do now if someone has if no one has a demo does anyone have a demo no i don't have any it would be really cool to see yours okay cool so i'm gonna do mine uh, cool so i have a pad that i had been working on so I'm letting these two connect to each other. Oh, yeah, they're connected, they're syncing. So, um, so they're syncing between each other. And I think, um, yeah, so I have, I have the, here the, the cursor, the remote cursors, which I can show, well, we can correlate to the user here, page one, page two. Uh, this guy also has a cursor here. Uh, yeah, I'm changing the cursor. I can also have markers. So yeah, I can have a marker. So it's singing, yeah, it's marking in here. Um, so yeah, it should, it should all be, be syncing. So if you're curious, as I said, the cursors are not part of the CRDT, they are just, uh, being gossiped um, between all the peers, so um, it would be an, an overhead to add that to the CRDT, even though we're using Delta, um, but, but Delta state-based CRDTs, there's, uh, we're trimming the, the Deltas, so we're the, the overhead of having um, more Deltas is, is not re really relevant, but anyway, this is just to exercise the capacity that Peer Star App has for um, doing a gossip network, encrypted call gossip network, in this case, because we have the keys. The keys are being passed here on the URL. So this is the name of the pad, which is a unique name. Uh, and then we have the keys here, uh, which is the read and the write key. I can also uh, share, I can also share the read only link. So if I just do a read only link, I should be able to even though I'm online, 
I should be I only be able to follow. I shouldn't be able to to edit. I'm typing here and whoops, sorry. Let me remove this. Um, and the other the other node should be receiving the should be receiving the updates. But in a read read only fashion. So yeah, my my PC fans are screaming now. But uh, but yeah, so and and I cannot edit anything because I have a read only. If I try to to edit the CRT here, uh, the other peers would reject my messages um, because they they're, they're not um, signed and encrypted. Well, if they, even if they could be encrypted, they are not being signed with the right key because I don't have the right key right now. So yeah, um, that's my demo. Any questions? I uh, really cool, really nice. Um, I was I asked in the in the chat whether the coursers are color coded, so that each each user has a color for. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I forgot to mention that. Uh, so there's I uh, yeah they're color coded. So so if I you can see if I select here. I select here. Well, UI is not is is really poor yet. But if I select here, I can see that it is Pedro one that uh, did this uh, marker here, uh, and Pedro two here. So it's color coded using the peer ID. You can see here. Oh, sorry, I'm not sharing. Am I sharing? Oh, I'm not sharing. Sorry. All right. So let me share again. Are you seeing my screen? Yeah, cool. So, as I was saying, uh, as you can see, Pedro here, Pedro one, Pedro two, are is color coded. I hear my selection here uh, is color coded here, so I can see who who it is. The UI is not is not the best yet, but the the backend is 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 working. The color code is like a um, it's a very simple function that gets the pure ID and then gets uh, and, and gets a pure ID that any random buffer that puts uh, a corresponding color um, is using an NPM package. Does that answer your question, Gonzalo? Yeah. Cool. Yes, thank you. No worries. So hopefully in two weeks we'll be using PeerPad with cursors and markers uh, for the next uh, meeting. Um, cool. Uh, any generic questions or issues? Um, I have one about uh, the React Dev server taking so long. There is this other bundler called Parcel.js. Maybe that one could be used instead of Webpack on the React app because it uh, caches things on the file system. So it does not have to always recompile everything when uh, the server is restarted. Oh, it, it caches between between restarts. So I didn't know that. That's really useful. Thank you. A parcel. Yeah, I have I heard about it. I'm not really a front end uh, guy, but uh, uh, but I will I will check it out definitely uh, to speed up. Thank you. Any other question? Hey, this is Dirk. Um, really nice demo. Thank you for uh, for showing that to us. Oh, you're welcome. I don't. I didn't, I didn't realize you were there. I What's just, that? I didn't realize you were you were in a meeting. Sorry. Yeah, I was just kind of lurking. Uh, yeah, I did have a question. Um, I was wondering, have you guys? Does this have any relationship to the Orbit DB project that's also using a lot of CRDT functionality? Yeah, Orbit uh, is built on top of of IPFS. I'm not sure about the internals. Um, how how they're they're yeah, but it uses CRDTs, uh, and it uses it's older than 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 PureStar, but I'm, I don't know how active the the project is, uh, but it yeah I, I use CRDTs. That's all that's all I know. Use CRDTs in PFS. That's that's uh, that's all I know. Basically, um, yeah. So so um, it's. Um, it's it's uh, 
Well, I, I read the radical uh, like a while ago, like a year ago, um, but I, I'm a bit of the code a year ago. Um, I'm not sure what, what the status on, on that project is. But it was really interesting. It was what I think was the first project to, to do CRTs on top of, of IPFS. There was a chat app, so called Orbit chat, I think. Yeah, uh, I think there, um, it seems like it's being pretty actively maintained. Nice. And I think that they've kind of taken a different approach to CRDTs where they base everything on a log construct, essentially a replicable uh, or a grow only array. So uh, for example, when they implement a key value store, um, it's essentially just a bunch of uh, add and delete operations. Um, so if you want to overwrite a value in the store, you send a delete and then an add. Right. But yeah, obviously it's not exactly a CRDT in the in the sense that you guys are building CRDTs. Uh, well, I'm, well, I don't know if, if, if it's uh, could be an op based CRDT. Doesn't need to be delta based. That like the ones we're using. Yeah, um, exactly. Could be an, an operation based CRDT. But the important thing is is that all all of them converge uh, to the same value, uh, the, independent of the, the the order of the messages that they're received. Um, if it's a CRDT, if it does that, it, it, it's a CRDT. Um, but the, the op we, we try to escape the, the, the operation CRDT because uh, there's, there's a bunch of, of things. So my na namely uh, operation trimming. Uh, so being able to decide when an operation is no longer relevant and then can discard it locally. And also uh, fast booting uh, a remote node. So, um, we had to uh, synchronize all the logs, all the operations uh, to a new, a new node. Even though the, the current internal state could be very small, uh, we had to synchronize all the operations from, from the beginning. Um, there's ways around that, but they are more or less complex. It involves um, causal, a principle of cause, determining causal stability in all the peers. Um, we can do that without consensus. Uh, but since since there's a bunch of inherent problems of on operation based CRDTs, we decided decided to explore delta state based CRDTs. Uh, not not sure if you're uh, familiar with the concept. There. Yeah, yeah, I am. And I was, uh, you know, I've read a couple of the white papers, and I was looking through your code, and I think that approach definitely makes sense. Um, the one thing I was thinking about where it might be helpful to use Orbit is uh, you were mentioning by email, maybe using a or using some kind of persistence layer, and it might it might work for that use case. Correct. We we it has it has a log. Um, I'm not sure. So right now we're we're using we're using back uh, to to for the for the protocol for the synchronization protocol, uh, and 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 if Orbit is is using the same thing, yeah, it should should be easy to. To use that. Otherwise, we currently on Peerstar already have very basic support for read-only modes, and we should then be able to after after this easily be able to um, replicate without knowing the content of the CRDT. So just just to create um, like a basic a basic peer that is able to listen to to, to and, and to listen to messages and persist them, even though it doesn't know the content of the messages. So it, it will not be able to derive a state from all the deltas, but it, it will be able to persist all the deltas. So with, uh, it's just a matter of having, of testing that I think Peerstar is, is able to do that already. Um, not sure. Uh, the thing that, that you probably, yeah, yeah. Peerstar Pierce, has has a few things that that it concerns itself about, also uh, because of network topology. So it, the way it forms the gossip topology between all the nodes is in a way that is not native to IPFS, because IPFS the discovery protocol. Once the peer is discovered, you try to connect it immediately to it. It uses floods up for for gossip, and Right now, we're wrapping the, trans the discovery and only 
allowing connections to be established between nodes in a, in a certain part of, if we form, um, well, let's say that, that it's, a, it's a bit more com complicated, but each node does not connect to every node. That's, that's the thing. Even though all nodes uh, between each other, so we can reach any node uh, through any other node. <laughs> uh so so this is basically to make this more more scalable so if you use dash just this basic ipfs to create the overlay the, the topology um it won't scale to 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 many peers inherited because you're just saying that makes sense i saw you have a kind of like ring ring topology right exactly exactly uh you you create you only connect to certain peers if you form a ring and then you, will, you know your position on the ring and then you connect to six nodes on that ring on specific positions of, of the ring. Uh, six, six is an arbitrary number, but the most important thing is that two of those six are the next and the successor and the successor of the successor. So that even though uh, we, we to make sure that we can always uh, move forward, messages move forward in, in, inside the the, the network that's the basic concept of, of that so that's also that that's why peer star exists um if you're wondering cool okay thank you cool any more questions no I'll stop share. All right. Thank you guys for coming. Um, I hope to see you in two weeks, if not before. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.